Welcome back, folks, to some more Down the Hands Cross Time Saloon. What's this for? If you th well, m look around and. Give me a fucking tattoo, you fucking asshole. It'll cost you that whole $30 in your wallet. Do you have anything cheaper? I was giving you a break. $50 is usually my minimum. This is for the thugs? Yeah. You don't want that design. I'll give you what you need. For $20? All right, all right, all right. $30. You start to hand him the wad of money when he pauses and looks straight into your eyes. Are you positive about this? Do it to it. Eric takes the money and puts it somewhere beyond the counter. Put your hand here. You take your hand, and after swabbing it carefully with antiseptic wipes, he goes quickly to work. So you're giving me what all the thugs get, is that it? Ow. You know, I, I thought this was going to hurt more than it does. It's actually not too bad. Ow. It's not a very colorful tattoo, is it? Ow. A half hour later. About how this friend of a friend of mine got his nipple tattoo, but it got infected, so eventually it fell off. Now, is that possible, or is it just an old wives' tale? Done. You inspect your hand carefully, holding it up eye level and sighting down the lines to check himself for accuracy. It's a great job, especially considering you did it freehand. Great job. Do I have to take any special care of it? Don't get it under any high-frequency lasers. They'll take it right out. Well, thanks. Sure. All right, got a sweet tattoo now. Open harassments. Payments made at the time of harassment must be bought at the third floor cashier office and receipt attached to voucher when submitted. Note the name Perry Yeas from Home Cooking. I think I just heard somebody drop a fork. Well, I forgot to do something in the tattoo part. Gotta get my needle there. That's for my tattoo. Pick, you're able to open the freezer door. As you do, the ice cream man bolts over from the restaurant, his face livid. He hollers at you to get away from the wagon. He adds that if you'd just been patient, he would have been happy to sell you some ice cream. You, on the other hand, know perfectly well you could have waited forever. You ask the ice cream man about his ice cream. He describes what he's got. None of it sounds the least bit appetizing. He decided to take a pass.
I didn't. How would you like? What? I'll have you just. I'll take. No. Oh, That's a lot. Nah. Hey, you're. F yeah. Cool. Not. What's with the? F I'm that. No. That's good. No. No. Are you a product? No. You mean it? No. I'll take a few of those. No. Uh, nah. Hey. Not. Look. We. Uh, let. Now out of my. Go. That's fucking pointless. What kind of we have Al Caliph? How's business? Are you? I am aspiring to be. Huh, what a business is fair, thank you for asking. The worst thing about being in my business is the organization, but I'm only telling you that because I know you can keep a secret. Your head is full of them. How's business? Are you? Yes. Business is hey, you were just long. I mean I'm work well. Be nice to the one. Are you a... If I... So is that enough? What are your specials? How... Is that real drawn butter? Not really. Do go on. It all sounds... Perhaps... Not a chance in hell. How can anybody... It can be a... Ah... Uh, one... Real... Thank you. No fucking idea what to do. Fucking awesome. Let's see, maybe this guy wants some chocolate. Come over here thinking I'm just gonna give you information about where you are or what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, but I just wanted to ask you. I know what you wanted to ask me, and so you know Dr. Duplicitous. No, hell no, and absolutely not. No, get away from me. You know I'm not even on Boyatrazine, and I can tell you're lying. Oh, can you? You can, huh? Well, then get away from me. I didn't do it. What's with the firecrackers? I'm a cop. That no, wait. That's good too. No, no, no. Are you a pro no? You mean it? No. What's with the firecrackers? Say the same goddamn fucking things Goodbye, over boy. and over. Fucking goddamn dumbass bitch. Let's harass this asshole. Pardon me. Is your name by any chance Perry Yay? Oi, who is inquiring? Hey, I'm here to harass you about your late protection payment. Oh, terrific. Can't you see the lunch crowd I've got here? I'm sorry, I'll come back after they've cleared out. I would appreciate it. Are you ready to be harassed? No, my lunch crowd is still here. What time do you think they'll be leaving? After lunch. I didn't do it. You got anything that would clear out a crowd? I got good stink bombs. Can I get one from you? Maybe. What's it worth? What do you want? You got any blasting caps? How about some really good chocolate? No, but I'll tell you what. I'll trade you a blood sickle for a stink bomb. What's that? Ice cream. That's nice that you still have ice cream. It's not really ice cream. 
But I like it because it spreads rapidly when you set it on fire. Okay, fair enough. I'll get you a bloodsickle. Go back to what you were... Goddamn stupid fucking games are so stupid. Gotta have the exact goddamn dialogue option. The ice cream man picks up on the fact that you've got chocolates. Alright, good. Take the fucking chocolate and give me the fucking ice cream. Shit is getting fucking stupid. You swap the blood you in the bomb with a young punk whose eyes light up. It's been nice to see that even in the days of jaded youth, ice cream still brings delight to a child. He practically inhales the ice cream and meticulously licks off the stick. Watch this! He pulls out a match and lights the dry end of the stick. He cocks his arm back and flings the stick across the park. As it reaches the end of its arc, it bursts into flame and explodes. When it hits the ground, cars swerve, mothers scream, fathers weep, children applaud and blow up into tiny little baby pieces. <laughs> See? That's why I wanted you to buy it for me. They won't sell them to kids my age. You evil fiend. Not yet, but someday I hope to be. Deep bomb lands on the ground in front of home cooking and fills the block with a foul stench. The maitre d' runs into the street trying to get everyone to come back, or at least pay their bills. Boom shaka laka. Stinky, shit smell fills the area. Perrier's rushes buck outside and quickly removes the bomb from the premises. Mon Dieu, please do not leave, Madame, Monsieur. The crowd at the restaurant has a similar reaction and they clear out immediately. Je suis... Ah, oh, God damn it! Your lunch crowd seems to have cleared out. You owe us some money, I believe. You better pay up or else. Oh yes, it's harassment time, isn't it? Damn straight, mister. Very well, go ahead. If you don't give us our money pretty soon, we're gonna have to get top. Maybe damage all of this, okay? So let's get with it. Mm-hmm. So, consider yourself harassed. That's it? You call that harassment? That's hardly even making a nuisance of yourself. Here, grab me by the collar. You grab the maitre d' by the collar. Now, shake me. You shake him back and forth. Not so gently. What am I, a baby? You beat the living fucking dog shit out of him. Like that? Aye. It'll do. Now hit me. Do I have to? And you're in the organization. Come on. Okay, slap me then. You have push, half smack him in the jaw. Pitiful harder. Come on, my grandmother could harass me better than that. Rough me up. Throw me against the brick wall. Punch me in the stomach. You give him an Indian burn. No, like this. He hurls himself bodily against the wall and then throws himself across the table and onto the floor. He stomps himself a few times for good measure, necessitating a rather awkward contortion. Finally, he stands up and wipes a small trickle of blood from the corner of his mouth. That kind of thing. Now, do you want to give it a try? You give him a very hard noogie to the top of the head. Hopeless. That was the worst harassment in the whole glorious history of harassment. Okay, I'll have the money by tomorrow, yada, yada, yada. Now, if you'll excuse me. I've already filled that out. I'm certainly not going to let you make me put myself through that again. All right, we've fulfilled our obligation as a thug. Thugs. Thuggy, 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 thug. for thinking about me. Hardly anyone does anymore. You're a long way from home, aren't you, young man? I am. You're not in the organization by any chance, are you? Oh, yes. They have bingo. Would you sponsor me? I'd be honored. I think you'd make a very nice crook. Stand up and let me look at you. You obligingly stand. I'm curious for the old lady. Yes, you do well. Oh, this is so exciting. <laughs> Where do I sign? Sign what? Don't I have to sign a card or something? Oh, I don't know. I'll see. Don't leave. Oh, I'll be here. He 
You hop up on the statue and snatch the glasses off Charles's head. Nobody stops you. windshield jobs take anyway depends but well, mr. Puka, as long as he's on the phone I can find something to do when he needs it I can have it finished in 10 minutes this way I get a decent buck he congratulates himself on having good timing and we both go away happy can't he tell you're deceiving him well on some level he knows but he's one of those people who'd rather go away happier than wiser just because we're psychic and we can hear each other's thoughts, that doesn't mean we don't hear what we want to hear. That's very deep. Really? It's like they need to reinforce their worldview at any cost, even if it means actively misinterpreting the data? Mmm, <laughs> no. That's not quite as deep. I thought it was the same thing. Well, maybe it is. Told ya! How's that cutter working out for you? This is a very nice cutter. So I like mine, only a little more broken in. I like it better this way. And the price, well, I, I don't want you to think I ripped you off, but I usually pay twice as much for a cutter of this quality. Don't worry, you did. games where certain things don't happen until other certain things happen. And we need to get sponsored first. I'm glad Josie... <laughs> <laughs> Fuck your mother. Not in the organization, but oh yeah, no. Why? <laughs> you give the old lady a sponsorship card, and she fills it out, smiling widely the whole time. There you are. You'll let me know how you're doing, won't you? I want to be able to tell people my protege is successful, and you come to me with any assignments you don't know how to handle. Okay? Of course, and thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now the fucking utility knife is by his foot. So can use that to shape the lenses on the glasses. You fix the circular tending to the glasses and attempt to squeeze out as many of the air bubbles as you can. You slip the sunglasses on. Not bad. Pull your head through the rubber band, double it over a couple times, and give yourself a nice tight little ponytail. Ponytail horrific. Fuck delicious. Let's see if we can get in. You hand your sponsorship card over to the counter and to the receptionist. She texts the name against a list of approved sponsors. This seems to be in order. Have you met all your prerequisites? I think I do. Let's see. She goes over the checklist with care. She approves of your new hairstyle, 
your sunglasses and your tattoo. Smart choice of tattoo. Most of us end up getting one of the UPC tattoos anyway. It makes payday go so much quicker. Then she meticulously checks both the harassment voucher and the sponsorship card. If I end up making a mistake here, it takes weeks to untangle. Yep, these are both just fine. Congratulations, Mr. Stonebender. I have a feeling being a third-rate thug is just the beginning for you. Just a moment and I'll get your license. Thanks for waiting. You'll be receiving your class schedule and information packet in the next few days. And at your first class, you'll be fingerprinted and photographed. Thank you. I'll try to make you proud. <laughs> Admire your new card and celebrate your newfound status by throwing out the cut piece of glass in your pocket. seen your license yet, Cupcake. Read it and weep. You play your trump card and thrust the license in the thug's face. He grabs your wrist and pulls your arm back so he can focus on the license. His brain slowly absorbs its meaning, very much in the same manner that a solid block of brass soaks up water. He lets go of your wrist. That's good enough. Taking offense at the undeserved rough treatment you received, you don't mince words with him. You darn tootin' it is. You march triumphantly into the thug's lounge. You can almost hear the crowd's roaring theme of the chariot of fire. Once you're inside, you can't imagine what the fuss is about. Nothing's happening in here. Disappointed, you trudge back out to the lobby. Yes, Miss Gegelsizer. I'm sorry, madam. Miss Otis called to say that she regrets she has to cancel lunch again today. But she did suggest coffee and dessert tonight after her meeting with the Retributions Department. Take the kidney under the cover of the open fridge and slip it into your shirt. Closing the fridge, you attempt to stroll nonchalantly out of the thug's lounge with a big sloshing jar pinned between your arm and your side. The thug in the bar casts a suspicious eye at you and sails past you and goes rolling onto the floor. And then the poor eyeball rolls out of the door. The thug immediately walks over, opens the fridge, and announces a sudden 50% drop in iced kidneys. The thug by the door grabs you as you sneak Yo, by. Yo, you trying to steal one of our stolen organs? As he shakes you, sloshing ground, the sloshing sound grows very loud, and finally the thug hears it. He reaches into your collar, pulls the bottle out with his right hand, and with his left hand shoves you across the floor. You stand, tuck in your shirt, and inspect a number of scrapes. The thug returns the kidney, and you walk out empty-handed. I'm glad Josie wasn't around to see that. I just know she'd give me a hard time about it. Yeah, get the fuck out of the goddamn building, you dumbass bitch. If it isn't the shakiest thug in the West. Forgive me, I'm basically a nice person. Then get out of that line of work. If I'm going to put my life into someone's hands, I'd like them to at least be competent. I'm a little afraid to say this, but I'm hungry. Well, we have some leftovers from lunch if you'd like something. Suppose it doesn't hurt to keep your wheels greased. If I recall, we have some salmon coquettes, some haggis, some snake and kidney pie. And for dessert, we have several flavors of gigolo and some very nice creme moulée. Make mine skank and kidney pie, please. An interesting choice, sir. 
or he disappears into the restaurant for a moment and comes out with a jar containing the kidney. I was mistaken. We have a leftover kidney, but the chef says we are not going to cut up our 20-foot anaconda just for one slice of pie. He hands the jar to you. It's a large human-looking kidney floating in it. Is this a human kidney? What do you care? It's free. If it's all the same to you, maybe I'll have this later. That's what I figured, so I put it into a to-go jar. Alright, got a kidney to go. Uh, maybe we can do a little Indiana swap here. I pick up the bottle of kidney and shake it. It sloshes and clinks merrily. Little bits of kidney floating around in the murk. Carefully replace the bottle on the refrigerator shelf. The refrigerator door slams closed. Organization West. We got the right kidney here. Let's go find out. Rat's eyes takes a kidney. So far, so good. He opens the jar and dumps a kidney in his hand. Turn it over. He checks the serial number engraved on the bottom. All right. Nice going, Ace. Rat's ass plops the kidney back in the jar and wipes the hand on the back of his pants. The goo beads up and runs so off. So here's what you want to know. The code for Dr. Duplicitous's elevator is 382-582-532. Here's how you remember it. Muffin, love, and lemon. Just remember muffin, love, and lemon. How does that help me remember anything? It's easy. Two is N. Three is M. Five is L. Eight is F or V. Ignore the vowels. So you have... You take your pencil and write the number on the back of the recipe. Thank you. Don't mention it. You know, don't kid him about his hair. He's very sensitive. I wouldn't have anyway. Punch the code Rat's ass gave him to the keypad. You hear the elevator word, and dog. When the elevator arrives, you swagger onto him, turn to see the thug gaping at you. The doors close and the elevators begin to ascend automatically. After a minute, it stops and scourges you into the laboratory. In the center of this clean, busy laboratory is a tank large enough to three, four people. Or if engineered by Squish's race, maybe part of your foot. The room is humming with activity and all manner of mysterious chemical reaction, computation, preservation, and experimentation going on. Everyone is too busy to notice the arrival of you and the thought patterns. The bow chamber hermetically sealed the hatches tightly closed. No doubt Steve is an antisocial hermit inside. The elevator door closes. Like your average mainframe with seamless shard memory, scalability to large processor and ion configurations, high bandwidth, low latency clustering, RAID 12 disk array, 64 gigabyte ECC protected memory, redundant hot plug CPU, and in and out with dynamic reconfiguration. And look, it has a price tag on it. Why? This is a stolen mainframe. What is this? That's on a need to know basis only. So, tell me you're a criminal mastermind so I can tell you about this. It's a very exciting piece of machinery, very powerful, very, very exciting technology here. But it's very secret, and up till now has only been available to a precious few. 
Say you're a criminal mastermind. Say it. I'm a criminal mastermind. Terrific. We call this Le Biochambre 4000, the state-of-the-art solution for twisted geniuses like you, who may just not be feeling as diabolical as you used to. Maybe you let yourself go. Maybe you're just exhausted. There's a million ways it can happen. But with Le Biochambre, you can achieve the perfect atmosphere for villainous thought, the kind masterminds need to keep pulling off crimes of the century. It's this easy. You program in any set of audio, nasal, and ambient tactual environmental variables. Then you push the button and voila, what we call the complete biochambre experience. Does it have any visual capabilities? Does it have any visual? Look, we don't call this the greatest little isolation tank ever made for nothing. It projects a non-interactive, composited, holographic, 360-degree image around the inner lenticular circumference, simulating any environment, any time period, anywhere in your home. And you can get the sensation of moving through the world with on-the-fly, fully digital scene regeneration, none of that rendered crap. You can also select from an infinite variety of weather conditions, barometric, hydrostatic, gravitational, hey, it's all there. And even my 10-year-old daughter at home can use it. Isn't that incredible? What would you pay for something like this? I don't think I could afford it. And if that wasn't enough, listen to this. Every smell currently cataloged by the NSB is reproduced in seconds with a continuous online automated time-slicing microlab capable of producing up to 12 complex smells simultaneously. Now, how much would you pay? Not interested. Of course you're not, if that was all. Order one of these now, and we'll include two bottles of Le Biochambre 4000 SF polish specially formulated to keep your labio chambre looking clean and high-tech. Two free bottles. Okay, three free bottles. Let me tell you the number to call. I appreciate it, but this was more information than I needed. A lot more. Somehow I managed to detach yourself from the Monkey Island redo, an exuberant research salesman at the edge of the way. Realizing he's not about to close a quick sale, he turns his attention back to the control console. Cellular massage. Pardon me, I'm looking for the doctor. The doctor is tanking. Pardon me? He's in the think tank. That little honey right over there. He gestures toward the Le Bio Chambre 4000 in front of him. Thanks for all the info. Take one of those lab wipes. I need to get up this blackboard here. You turn the beanie on and aim it at Cecil. In his eyes, you see the beanie's light strobing and sparkling. What do you think you're doing? Hypnotizing you. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. I want you to focus on my voice. Yes. You are now hypnotized. Yes. You are familiar with hypnosis. You already know that just because you're under hypnosis, I can't make you do or say anything that you don't want to. Yes. Well, I want you to forget that you know that. Okay. <laughs> you're my bitch now, Cecil. Square control panels mounted on the wall. You suspect they control the tanks. Given them eleven appearance of the tanks' occupants, you decide not to toy with them. As 
does the Labar Chambre door, his is open, the man steps out. You interrupted me. You are Jake Stonebender, and oh, you've come a long way for nothing. And the sniveling little two-bit thief who provided you with my elevator code is going to be a very sorry little man. What should I do with you, Jake Stonebender? I'll make a deal with you. Are you listening? I didn't get to where I am by ignoring deals out of hand. What exactly do you have in mind? I want the neutralizer for my friend Al. I'll give you whatever you want. Oh, damn that blackboard. It takes a good deal of P3 to make the neutralizer, and I have none to spare. Although, what I could take some from you. That would work. I like that. What's P3? Only one of the most important physiological finds of the last 500 years. Ugh, I already don't like it. P3 is a hyaline fluid exuded by the system in response to pain. Like adrenaline? No. Adrenaline is non-specific to a variety of stressors, most of which are physical. But P3 is only released in times of intense emotional or psychological pain. It shows up in every fluid in the human body in minute quantities. It's a black bile. It's pure yang. And it's the primary component of the Voyatrazine neutralizer. So let me suggest this. I will extract P3 from you. Should you give me enough for my purposes, I will give you some neutralizer for your friend. Provided you survive the extraction process. Sounds good. Let's do it. Fine. Let's get started. Stand right here. John, would you administer the pre-wash? He's got a hypodermic. He jabs it into your arm and the world spins. First around the x-axis and around the y-axis. Just as it's getting to the z-axis, everything goes black. When you come to, the first thing you notice is the coldness. The room is cold. Your back is against something cold. And suddenly you realize that you're naked. Lying on a metal table. Funny how dangerous is supposed to be romantic. Though from the shrinking sensation you have down below, you're not finding this the least bit erotic. I'm glad to see you're awake. It's always better when they start off aware of what's happening. <laughs> you know, in my line of work, I meet a lot of very deluded, very sick people. But nobody with quite your brand of lunacy. Am I a lunatic? Yes. You believe that we're in the future. Not exactly. You're the one. This is your present. I'm visiting. Just to help Alfie. Yes, that's what you said. But I don't remember Alfie thinking he's from the past. He comes back. Right, in a time machine. The same one that got you here. Is that right? Yes. Where's my stuff? I took the liberty of lightening your load. You had some things that did not belong to you. Rubber bands are quite valuable these days. We shouldn't have had one out in the open. The rest of your belongings are right here. If you survive, they'll be returned to you. And I get the antidote, right? Yes. Now that I think of it, I do remember him saying something about the past. And I remember being somewhat in doubt as to his state of sanity. But he had cash, so I decided... Why be judgmental? 
If you can read my mind, you know I'm not making it up. If you are delusional, then what I see through your eyes would be a delusion as well. But down to business. Now, I'm going to reach down and scour those billions of memories and nightmares of yours in search of the blackest, vilest little nuggets of fear I can find. The things buried so deeply that you don't even talk to yourself about them. I envision it as being inside of your mind and being surrounded by the traumas and bruises and cuts. Most of them look healed over. But when I take my fingernails and rake them over the scabs to find the ones that really haven't healed at all, the cysts hidden behind them, that's what I'm looking for. I have to pop them, drain the bile from them. Stop describing it and- Oh. Yeah, let's get it over with, motherfucker. You're wasting my video time. Dr. Dipshit stops his brainwashing process long enough to take the photo from your pile of stuff. This? What about it? The one I don't like to talk to myself about. The one I can't forgive myself for. The one that won't go away. Ah. I knew you had something like that. I'll see what I can pull out about it. Well, what if I... what if I just told you? We can certainly try that. But if this is a delaying tactic, I'm going to be disappointed. No, this is the real stuff. Then by all means, tell me about it. I had a family. This was a long time ago. This was 1970. My wife, Barbara, we had a daughter, Jessica, who was just a toddler at the time. She was the most perfect child. I mean, she was an angel. She never stopped smiling. We used to tell her, come on, cheer up, and then she would laugh. I was making a good living singing and playing, believe it or not, and Barbara was teaching part-time. And it was, it was too good to be true, I guess, too good to last. I must have been out of my mind. I fixed, I tried to fix. I thought I fixed the brakes on our car. I replaced the front brakes myself. Jake Stonebender, master mechanic, right? We were going to a movie, and, uh... We were on our way, and we were at an intersection. There was a truck coming from the left, and I slammed on my homemade brakes, and, uh... Um, they failed. We hit the tractor trailer. I couldn't have... I was only going a few miles over the speed limit. I had the brakes on, but they gave out. The engine block came right on through the dashboard, right between me and Barbara and Jessica, and they... Uh, they were on fire. I wasn't, but they were. We were all trapped, and they burned to death right beside me. I was hardly hurt, and I killed my wife and my baby girl. They had to cut us out of the car with chainsaws. I was sitting beside them, and they were... So dead, I kept begging them to move. I started screaming at them finally, but they were so dead. I could see their faces, the expressions they were wearing when they burned. That was the last way they looked. I still see it. I see it so much I forget what it is I'm looking at. They were cutting me out, and when the chainsaw came near me, I thought, how can I live with this? So I climbed out the window and put my wrists up to the chainsaw. Why didn't you kill yourself? I tried. The guy knocked me out. Why didn't you try again? I did. The doctor that saved my life also saved my soul. He took me to a bar and uh, I guess I learned to want to live again. I'm not sure how. That was wonderful. And just look at that. Bottle. Jake Stonebender, I am delighted with you. You are a mess. And I am going to keep my end of the bargain. Perhaps in a few years I'll pay you another visit. I'm sure you'll have a lot more for me by then. Dr. Dipshit, a cruel but fair man, unstraps you and removes the extractor from your chest. He hands you a small vial of the neutralizer. Almost giddy with glee, he removes the bottle of P3 drained from your psyche. Puts it in the laboratory freezer. 
You collect your belongings and the doctor follows you down to the time sled in the alley outside. You set the controls to return to Callahan's, put in the next code number, throw the lever, and take another gut-twisting ride that twirls the world around you like a pinwheel. The next thing you know, you're back on the roof. The doctor stays in the sled, but you climb out. Have you any idea what sort of a repository of misery and despair the history of mankind holds for me? How much P3 I can refine from hundreds of generations of frightened, lonely people? You, more than most, should appreciate its power. Look at what it's done for you half your life. Look at how you survived. I think I survived in spite of my pain. Then maybe you should think about it a little longer. In the meantime, I'm going to pay a visit to the Spanish Inquisition. The church should never have left the torture business. He sets a date as he saw you do. You pull the recipe halfway out of your pocket, then you stop to think better of it. What's that? He snatches it out of your pocket and reads it. What's this? You wanted to give me your recipe? No, I... He throws the recipe back at you and pulls the handle on the time slot. I prefer to eat out. So long, Stonebender. Bye bye. You race down the ladder. If he's gonna wake up again. You hold up the neutralizer. Got what I was looking for. You pour a little vial down Alfie's throat. A few moments later, he sputters and wakes. That tastes terrible. What was that, anyway? Notice anything different? The voices. You did it! He throws his arms around you. How can I ever repay you? You already paid. I did? I had to bargain a little with your friend, Dr. Duplicitous. You got the cure. You got the time sled. He what? But how could you do that? I didn't think you had a choice. That's not the point. A man like him with a time sled? I'm a little irresponsible. He'll destroy the world. I wouldn't worry too much. He didn't like your recipe. He hand him his beanie and the recipe. He went to check out the Spanish Inquisition. He also begins to say that he wouldn't have expected the Spanish Inquisition, but so do about six other people. Yeah, I'll trail off before the words are out of their mouths. Once he gets out of the sled, he can't start it up again. Unless he wants to try the ten billion combinations it'd take to find the right one. Wanna tell us what happened, Jake? You wait a moment before responding to Fast Eddie's request. I don't think so. I'm gonna have to think about it myself for a while. Fast Eddie pulls out a blackjack and offers it to you, but you decline. You're not into the pain thing right now. And that wraps it up for an extended video here, folks. We'll see you again next time. Thank you for watching.